Chapter 32, Brazil, 1996. I do not say this to boast, but I believe my own species to be one of the most visually stunning in the entire known universe. My mother named me Astralis, and I possess a large head that towers above my bipedal body, adorned with intricate spots resembling veins on my otherwise smooth skin. Small bumps dot my cranium, adding to my own unique appearance, which is considered to be extremely handsome by most other species. And though some may find them unusual, my two red orbs serve as both eyes and windows into my soul. Fortunately for my parents and children alike, ever since I was very young, I have been informed that I am among the most aesthetically pleasing samples of my species. In all the galaxies we have explored, I have never encountered a race as stunning as my own. However, many of my kind do admire the young female humans from the region known as Brazil on Earth. They possess dark, smooth skin and prominent mammary glands above their midsections. Their buttocks are also considered to be exceptional in both size and shape by our standards. My mission, assigned by the Intergalactic Treaty, was to save countless trees and other types of plant life from the Earth's forests and transport them to a planet called Gliese 581g. This particular planet served as a vast arboretum, safeguarding plant life from all corners of the universe that were deemed at risk of extinction within the next century by the Intergalactic Council. My task was to carefully collect samples of these precious trees and clone them on Gliese 581G, where they would thrive in a protected environment. This effort would ultimately allow us to recreate the rich ecosystem found on Earth, or possibly even establish a similar one on another planet if humans ever succeeded in destroying their home. I had been on many similar missions, primarily to gather and transport various crops, fauna, and foliage. Our species had developed state-of-the-art technology that could be deployed from our spaceship while cloaked near Earth, and gather samples of earthly plant life and return them to our spaceship. This technology was almost undetectable to the local populations, except for the circular rings that our sample-taking equipment would sometimes leave behind. My kind had become especially interested in earth crops such as corn. However, we disliked broccoli and its albino cousin cauliflower. All of these plants not only played a crucial role in human nutrition, but they also thrived in multiple environments and were essential for maintaining biodiversity. Without them, many other species would suffer and potentially face extinction. But this time as I went about my mission, and I observed the humans from above, I couldn't help but feel a sense of sadness for their lack of awareness. They were destroying their own planet, a place that could potentially sustain life for many eons to come. It was a thought that continued to weigh heavily upon my mind. One day, while I was undertaking one of my favorite activities by observing the very attractive female humans of Brazil, I noticed something peculiar. The humans had gathered in large numbers near one of their cities, holding signs and chanting in unison. My scanning equipment picked up on the vibrations of their voices and translated them into the words, Save the Amazon Rainforest. Although the protesters were not attempting to communicate with me specifically, this was, indeed, what I was in the process of doing. I was intrigued by this display of unity and passion for nature. It seemed that not all humans were blinded by greed and progress, some still held on to a deep connection with the earth. In that moment, I felt a sense of hope for humanity's future. Perhaps they had the potential to change their ways and save their planet before it was too late. And if not, at least my efforts would ensure that some plant life would continue to thrive elsewhere in the universe. With renewed determination, I continued my mission with even greater care and precision. Every single plant gathered on this particular mission was carefully selected and cloned to preserve its unique genetic makeup. As I completed my task, I couldn't help but feel a sense of satisfaction knowing that these various forms of plant life would live on in a safe haven far from human destruction. But as I left the planet Earth and headed back towards Gliese 581G, I couldn't shake off the thought that maybe there was still hope for humanity after all. And perhaps one day, our two species could coexist peacefully and create the most beautiful offspring in the universe together. But more studying would first be required of human reproductive abilities, as it was not yet clear to us if they were able to breed across species. Clearly these gorgeous females of Brazil had never been crossbred with any of the other earthly creatures such as sheep. But amidst all the joy and vibrancy of this civilization, I also witnessed the struggles and inequalities that plagued it. 
The disparity between the rich and the poor was very evident, with some living in lavish mansions while others of the same exact species struggled to find shelter on the streets. And despite their advancements in both technology and science, they still clung tightly onto outdated beliefs and prejudices. I was reminded by mankind once again of our own flaws as a species. Though we may possess superior beauty and advanced technology, we too have had our fair share of problems such as injustice, and inequality. As my mission neared completion, I was torn between my duty to my own kind and my newfound admiration for the beauty of these particular humans. But ultimately, I knew that their future survival could very well rely upon my own preservation of their plant life. And so it was with a heavy heart that I bid farewell to this beautiful planet as well as to their most beautiful people. And so, as our ship departed deep into space, I couldn't help but feel a sense of hope for the planet of Earth. Perhaps one day our kind will be able to return to this planet, not merely as saviors and observers, but possibly as fathers to the future children of Brazil. Until then, I will always carry with me fond memories of the Brazil of 1996, a place where both beauty and imperfection coexisted in nearly perfect harmony.